How you doing good people? This is the 8-Bit Animal. And today's video could potentially be called Data East owes Broder Bunda check. Problem with that is Data East doesn't exist anymore. Nor does Broder Bunda. But the point still stands. Because if Broder Bund doesn't release Choplifter in 1982, we don't get today's game eventually. Now, for the uninitiated, Choplifter was an action shooter hostage rescue game on the Apple II computer in 1982. I want to say this was about a year, year and a half after Broder Bun releases Load Runner. So they they were on a roll at this point. I mean, most people only know Broder Bun for educational software, but they they gave us some heat in a bunch of different genres. They gave us some heat, and Choplifter is no different. Well. Let's take, now nah, let's take Choplifter. We're not done talking about it, but we're gonna take Choplifter, pick it up, sit over here. Cause two years later, Data East comes into this picture and they release an arcade game called Cobra Command. Now Cobra Command is one of those laser disc games, kind of like Dragon's Lair. And later on, if you had a Sega CD, uh, stuff like Sewer Shark or Corpse Killer or, you know, any one of those games. Uh, Time Gal, Road Avenger, stuff like that. Um, where they used footage from an anime or they had footage that was done by an anime studio and you controlled Crosshair and you had, like, you had to make directional moves at the right time. Stuff like that to keep from crashing and to continue the story and the game was relatively popular so much so that years later it actually did end up on the Sega CD not in America though because they just wanted to give us all the stuff from digital pictures but never mind that still mad about that though. anyway take that and we don't put it to the side, but we kind of, we, we change course a little bit. Because four years later, 1988, Data East takes that same title and parts of that same concept. And they release an arcade schmuck called Cobra Command. That is completely different. It doesn't play like like the original Cobra Command it is a standard just regular regular shmup where you control a, a, you control a helicopter and it's it's serviceable it's decent it ain't bad now you fast now around the same year same year Data East releases today's game funny enough Today, we're going to talk about the NES port of Cobra Command. Now, NES Cobra Command takes pieces of Choplifter, the, the rescue elements of Choplifter, and plug them into something that kind of represents the arcade game. Um, now, the arcade, it gets rid of the auto-scrolling in the arcade game and it adds in some like subterranean bases because for some reason helicopters going into underground caves with tank fighting tanks and stuff makes sense but this was an okay video game wasn't a bad game at all um control ain't bad this was probably one of the better data east releases as far as their arcade ports because we know data east some of their ports were kind of spotty we all remember what they did to karate champ on the nes we all remember how choppy bad dudes was 
thankfully Cobra Command is not that bad. Um, you rescue these hostages at these different points in level in stages, um, and you defeat enemies and you land and upgrade your helicopter with different weapons. Um, you increase your mobility. You can increase, change different weapons. Um, you can change the rope that the hostages climb into a ladder that makes it e quicker for them to climb, makes it easier for them to climb. So it makes rescues a lot easier. And yeah, Cobra Command is a very serviceable side-scrolling shooter. It's also one of those things that I don't think a lot of people actually remember. Because honestly, it, until I really started doing research, I didn't remember Cobra Command. I remembered that there were several shmups where you controlled helicopters. Did not remember Cobra Command. That's a shame too, because it's a height. It ain't no chop lifter. But it is a height. Now, if you want a copy of Cobra Command, you can get a copy for $10 or less. It's an inexpensive game because don't nobody remember it. You could probably get a complete copy for about $20, $25 if you really want one. But my point still stands. It's a decent game that very few people remember and if it wasn't for Broderbun releasing Choplifter in 1982, there is a possibility that this game doesn't happen. Because if Data East didn't do nothing else, they boosted your game concepts. Because they definitely did that to SNK with Akari Warriors when they made Heavy Barrel. Home version of Heavy Barrel is better than the home versions of Akari Warriors though, so there's that. This has been the 8-Bit Animal, and I'll catch you beautiful people tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yep. This is exactly how you fight gentrification. That guy's got great ideas.